We are setting off from Chapel and Lee Frith. We've made a head start uh, basically because it's not worth recording some of the roads you've already seen. So we're starting off from here now. And uh, yeah, van's cutting the corners. Always good to keep your eyes open. So after all the rain we've had, there is a little bit of runoff on the roads. So there is some damp spots, but overall it's not a bad day. And sunshine in a little bit. Back to the rain tomorrow, so you've got to make the most of it while you can. Cold enough to have a little bit of a drip from your nose, though. So I'll probably be doing some sniffing inside the helmet. Quite a busy road this one as well, it's the uh, through road from the peaks down through back to uh, Manchester, the A6. section there but should be nice and audible again now that's yeah, the only thing with the uh, flip front helmet when you're vlogging you see you'll even though it's quite good when you get over about uh, 60 70 mile an hour a little bit of wind noise there just makes it a little bit uh, harder to hear on the microphone lets a bit of wind noise through nothing they can do about that but overall over the past few videos and obviously the one where we lost the audio with a 10% gain which wasn't uh, a very good move the audio has been quite good very very happy with this microphone she's never gave up yet once and I'm guessing for you guys it's nice and clear. It normally is when I'm watching back on the edits. But anyway, so this road now, Castleton, Cavins, Peveril Castle, and uh, Sheffield. It'd be nice to get past the wagon before the a solid white line. I think we've cut part of this road before but then we've turned the left up at the top down towards the caverns. So this time we're turning right. But that place there, beautiful lake that belongs to that, I think it wasn't once was a hotel. But it's been boarded up and empty for years. Fantastic place to live. And why it's never been finished, I'll never know. Coming into 
get a few, or as many as we can, rides in now before the, uh, the weather turns for winter. You're still going to have them nice days even through to December, but they will be cold. Uh, but yeah, we've got some work planned for the bike, so let's get them in now before before we strip down and do all that work. So this is Peak Forest. Some lovely little cottages around here. Peak house there. And this in front they call this the Manchester Bend. is right under actually let's take a little detour a little detour down here it's where Derbyshire's finest little back roads On the other side is Bradwell Moor and if we carry straight on we stay on the 623 uh, towards the destination where we're heading well these are all the little farmers back tracks to all the little villages and this road at the end of this and then take a left you run through to the village of Tideswell and the only problem with this now is we're going to get all the farm and cow shit on the road sunshine popping through and you know when I said it's not quite cold enough yet for the heated grips I've got a feeling at some point unless this uh, temperature rises a couple of degrees that I'll be switching them on Dropping down into Tidewell now. It's an unusual building now in front of me. 
Let's take the left road to Fulo and through to Ian. That's rather than stay on the main road and then just turning left straight into the village and all coming through the back way. popular today. Jabian, better known as the Plague Village, and uh, there's a Celtic cross on the sign. Welcome to our historic village. So yeah, it was hit by the plague in is it 16 something? Or oh, I'll have to look at those dates and put them up. And uh, yeah, it, it was the bubonic plague, so it started killing people off in the village and. They knew the only way to stop it spreading was for no one to leave the village and no one to uh, to come in. So they sealed off the village until uh, the plague had done its thing. But without doing my homework, I can't tell you exactly how many people died. Uh, but then there was uh, a, some guy, I think he's called Montpesson. Montpesson? Yeah, there's a well called Mont Montpesson's Well or something like that. Where he used to go and get the fresh spring water to go and... Uh, you know, give to the uh, the ill, and uh, yeah, he stayed in the village to help people out. And uh, they got the village stocks in here, and they do a, a big roast. Uh, I don't know, cow or sheep barbecue or something once a year, and everything as well. And there's a little craft village. Again, a very very popular place. Used to do that laying in a Land Rover that byway but yeah some of these houses date back probably 15th or 16th century it's quite a while since I've been down here the camp up the hill and uh, this place on the corner of the country store used to get all our stuff from there and then go up the hill to the campsite and there's a museum on the left we are going back up that way in a bit over the, uh, the moor it's the craft village and on the left hand side Courtyard Craft Village, a few shops in there, and these are the village stocks in front of me now, that's where these two people are walking, and that's Eam Hall, Masonic Hall, in fact, There's an old hall for you. Now 
never actually been in there, but I bet that's an old place. The village stocks. Many a rotten apple thrown at someone over there, I reckon. Oh shit, on my bike. <clears throat> roast sheep. There's where you do the roast sheep. Smells burning. Some bloody old graves in there as well. Um, that's the old that's an original Celtic cross. <clears throat> Here we go. 8th century Celtic cross Stanley, supporter of Reverend William Montpesson during the plague. Some of these graves are from 1665. Look at those crosses on those old ones over there. Cleared the visor anyway, that's one good thing. graves where uh, a lot of the play victims were buried the roads closed anyway oh yeah Riley Lane Riley Lane up there is where the graves are. So we won't walk up to the graves. Bit of a grave idea that. So 
so we'll go up over Ian Moore. And those are plague cottages where the plague started. And there's the roast sheep. And then uh, the stocks again back in front. The old Masonic Hall, Oak Hill Road. So I'm going to turn up here. The museum, little museum on the left-hand side. A car park. It's, but that is normally full. There's Ian Museum. If anyone wants to go there, can't believe there is no cars in that car park. That is normally packed. Oh, I think they've opened up another one actually in the back. And this looks absolutely beautiful when it turns to the proper autumn colours. You can see there's a few leaves down now, but... A very, very wet road this. This would be no good on your Michelins. Bit of autumn colour here now. And the road that I mentioned before, Great Hooklow, uh, comes down to this road here, this back road. This is Mont Pesson's Well. <sighs> Alright. Eam, the village by the water, has many stories to tell of its history, countryside, industry and the plague. If you look behind the railings under the hooded stones you can see water supplied by a stream, not a well. It was once used as a watering place for pack horses. We get water at home through a tap. Years ago everyone in Eam drew water from troughs like this one. He used the old pack horse way to come here. It connected Eam to the old salt route between Sheffield and Cheshire. Salt, like our modern freezers, helped to preserve meat for use during the winter. So how did the well get its name? In 1665 to 1666, Eam was infected with the deadly plague, which came from London. The Reverend William Mompesson and the villagers courageously quarantined themselves to stop the plague infecting other villagers. This site was used as a dropping point for food by neighbouring villagers. Residents of Eam left coins as, in, as payment in the water, believing they would be purified. Since then, it's been known as Mompesson's Well. Even today, some people still leave coins and make a wish. So there you go, there's a little bit of the history. So here is the well. And actually, apart from that little bit of scum on the top, it is pretty clear. And you can see the coins that people have thrown in. Oh well, yeah, they've been using that well since, what, 1600, 16 something? Shot of the bike on the bad side. Absolutely beautiful day today now. That little bit before where it went cold.
further down, I think. Oh, blue sky to the left. And I had a couple of people say it was going to be bad weather today. Just like to inform you that you were wrong. years ago in these woodlands there was a lot of uh, witchcraft going on whether or not they still do it it's like someone's making it an inroad into there but pentagrams made out of twigs and like a big fire pit where everyone sat round. Pretty strange. Lean farm. He used to do a lot of work for the farmer. Who, uh, I don't think he lives there anymore. but in doing so allowed me to have a caravan on this end field for a few years which they don't do anymore but I'm just gonna So yeah, I used to spend a lot of weekends down here, bonfire night parties and you know all sorts of things. We were down every weekend, met a few people who were about 12 caravans on here, so it was a little community. All gone now. Nature's got its way back. Nice just seeing the sunshine coming through the trees now. Still a lot of damp on the roads though. Just gonna watch that with the leaves. Oh well. An old message from Dennis. So we'll carry on and see if we can, uh, we got the message to meet up at the station cafe. What the fucking hell? <laughs> How are you doing? Well, there's a fucking surprise. <sighs> hey? No. Sunday. They put Sunday. <sighs> what the fuck? Martin is it? Hey. Dennis. So where have you been trying to chase me from? I took a bit of, from uh, Stady Bridge, that's so, that's so, I yeah. right there because of traffic problems, all right, they're five minutes late. So oh. I'm to do then I'll go to Habersham and I'll come here and I'll catch you somewhere along the route. Right. And we passed it and you say we passed it to Simon Ian. 
My, oh yeah, I might have to come down and... Uh, the, the, it's like a little uh, tea shop. Yeah, there, probably. I think you went up and come back down yourself. Yeah, yeah. That's where I saw you then, yeah. Yeah, well I left the garage at 10.33. Yeah. So I thought, you know, well, I was that's what you're doing it. I thought, I thought, what do I do? Do I fucking stop and pull over and ring him and say we'll be five minutes late? Or should we just take a chance? Yeah. yeah. Drive with the peak disco at Ikea on Sunday. You can all do Ikea on Sunday now when it rains. I thought you were doing Ikea. Ah! That's why I put it down.